Are America's stealth bombers preparing to strike Iran's nuclear heart again? Just weeks after devastating U.S. airstrikes, Maxar satellite images show heavy construction at Iran's Fordow facility. Iran isn't just repairing, they're rebuilding. Fast. President Trump was crystal clear. If Iran restarts its nuclear program, we will hit them again, this time harder. But this goes beyond nuclear. Iran hides missile silos, warhead vaults, command centers, deep under cities. They're so-called underground missile cities. America may be readying a response like we've never seen. Will they unleash the B-21 Raider, America's newest ghost, AI-guided, invisible, precision strikes, backed by B-2s, tomahawks, submarines, electronic swarms? This isn't Operation Midnight Hammer, this is its evolution. Operation Total Neutralization. Prepare to be shocked. Bunker busters fell. Trump declared Iran's nuclear sites obliterated. Mops going through like butter. But Fordo is alive. Satellites show Iran is rebuilding. Fast. The Pentagon says Iran's program is severely degraded. But the IAEA warns it could restart within months. Because knowledge can't be bombed away. And some uranium may have moved before the strikes. Meanwhile, dozens of missile cities lie hundreds of meters deep, largely untouched. Even GBU-57 bunker busters often just seal them off. Iran's hidden arsenals remain a grave, persistent threat. What if the US and Israel are now planning a strike to obliterate all of it? Not a raid, but a synchronized offensive to cripple an entire underground military machine before it can strike back. The strike plan, how it would start. The decision to respond decisively isn't made lightly. It begins with critical, real-time intelligence collected by advanced satellites, drones, and surveillance aircraft. Any indication that Iran is crossing the red line, if uranium enrichment resumes toward weapons-grade levels, the next operation would begin long before the first missile hits. Phase 1, pre-strike setup. First, the lights go out. In the opening minutes, U.S. Cyber Command would move first, launching a digital offensive designed to blind and mute Iran's early warning systems. Within 90 seconds, radar stations, surface-to-air missile guidance, and internal comms could be disrupted, cut off from each other before they even realize what's happening. Then, the silence breaks. Tomahawk missiles roar out from Virginia-class submarines, still submerged in the Gulf and Arabian Sea. Targets, tunnel exits, air defense launchers, radar arrays, every eye Iran has on the sky, all hit within minutes, cracking Iran's outer shell before U.S. air assets even arrive. Then, from the absolute black, the very silent screams a chilling truth. Could this be the moment the U.S. unveils the B-21 Raider, the world's most advanced stealth bomber? A shocking display for Iran and the globe. The B-2 Spirit Bombers, ghostly icons of 90s technology, have already shattered expectations, effortlessly striking completely undetected over Iran's most sensitive sites. But what if the United States Air Force unleashes its next-generation stealth bomber, the B-21 Raider? Reportedly in its testing and beginning production phase, this next iteration forward in stealth promises better stealth, better delivery, designed to penetrate deeper into enemy airspace with lower visibility tougher to find than even its formidable predecessor. Its sudden, unannounced combat debut would send a strategic shockwave of its own, signaling a new level of dominance. Phase 2, the air campaign. The air assault would unfold in a synchronized strike package. B-21s as the primary penetration force, B-2 spirits in support. Israeli F-35, likely flying from forward bases near Syria or the Negev, would enter from the north and west targeting Fordo, Natanz, and suspected sites like Chalice. The preferred weapon, the GBU-57AB, massive ordnance penetrators. These 30,000-pound bunker busters are built to collapse tunnels, missile silos, and nuclear labs buried beneath hundreds of feet of rock. If deployed in volume as expected, they would aim to annihilate Iran's most secret, most hardened military assets in minutes. But air power wouldn't act alone. This kind of operation would require multi-domain coordination at an unprecedented scale. Space-based assets would monitor every strike in real time. Electronic warfare jets would jam Iranian radar and communications during the operation. Mid-air refueling tankers would choreograph non-stop support across the skies of Iraq and Jordan. 
decoy aircraft and stealth drones could be used to confuse Iranian interceptors and lead defenses astray. The idea wouldn't just be to destroy, it would be to overwhelm so quickly, so precisely, and from so many directions that Iran has no time to react. And if successful, Iran's entire underground war machine, from enrichment labs to missile cities, could be paralyzed before the regime even knows what hit it. But in war, nothing ever goes fully to plan. And Tehran, as history shows, always responds. Which is why the strike isn't just about hitting Iran's nuclear sites. It's about dismantling its entire underground military machine before it can fight back. Phase 3. Targets Beyond Nukes, Disrupting Iran's Military Underground Missile cities. Over two dozen of them buried within Iran's mountain ranges. These aren't just bunkers, they are automated launch grids, fortified in stone, feeding Iran's long-range missile program with rails, blast doors, and report silos. Until now, they've remained untouched. Invisible to warplanes, invulnerable to sanctions. In this next operation, those cave mouse would be cratered, entrances sealed or collapsed, choking Iran's second strike capability before it can ever leave the tunnels. The Chaos Facility. Officially denied, diplomatically dodged, and completely off-limits to the IAEA. But intelligence suggests something far darker beneath the surface. A suspected warhead design lab, hidden and hardened. If true, this becomes ground zero for the kind of strike that leaves no room for ambiguity. Command Centers. Iran's nerve centers for air defense and retaliation. These underground hubs synchronize radar, missile batteries, and national response in real time. Even after past Israeli strikes, the deepest and most protected of these remain intact. But in this campaign, they become priority targets, slated for isolation and elimination, to blind Iran before it can retaliate. Storage vaults and mountain bunkers. Not just ammo depots, but entire underground garrisons, carved over decades into the Zagros Mountains and the Central Plateau. Inside, drones, mobile launchers, fuel, weapon stockpiles, and rapid deployment forces. The kind of assets you can't afford to let survive a second round. Operation Midnight Hammer tried to seal the doors. This strike aims to collapse the rooms. But if the United States and Israel act, how exactly would Iran respond? Phase 4. Iran's carefully prepared response strategy. Iran has long planned multiple ways to respond swiftly and effectively if its core facilities are compromised. Iran would almost certainly retaliate with mass missile and drone barrages. Ballistic and cruise missiles, such as Karamshar, Shahab, Dezful, and Imad class missiles, would rain down on key targets. Iran would likely activate its proxies in Lebanon, Yemen, Iraq, and Syria to strike Israeli or Western interests, opening multiple fronts. These proxy groups could intensify tensions throughout the entire region. Iran has another playbook, one that doesn't rely on air bases or missiles, cyber operations. Cyber attacks on U.S. command networks or sabotage of Gulf oil infrastructure, Israeli power grids. Iran has previously demonstrated the ability to disrupt computer networks, financial systems, and critical utilities, creating widespread uncertainty and disruption without directly confronting. Iran could mine the Strait of Hormuz, the world's oil artery. Suddenly, tankers vanish from radar, markets crash, oil prices explode, global panic follows. Iran has also developed sophisticated drone capabilities, capable of precisely targeting Israeli nuclear facilities, U.S. naval ships, critical infrastructure. Energy facilities, airports, and logistical centers across Israel and Gulf states would likely be primary targets, causing significant disruption to civilian and military activities alike. Facilities such as Karamabad could rapidly deploy numerous ballistic and cruise missiles, targeting key American installations located across Iraq, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and even bases hosting U.S. personnel elsewhere in the Gulf. U.S. air bases like al in Qatar, as well as Israeli cities, encompassing locations like Haifa and Tel Aviv. A previous strike saw roughly 14 ballistic missiles fired at al with a few dozen reaching Israeli cities and causing some damage. Now, can Israel's Iron Dome stop 400 missiles launched all at once? And what if just one of them isn't conventional? What if it's nuclear? Iran enriches quietly underground. One mistake, and it's not just retaliation, it's escalation beyond control. Military analysts warn, even the most devastating strike may not erase knowledge. Even if Fordow is collapsed, Natanz sealed, and Chalus turned to rubble, the blueprints remain. The knowledge survives. 
and the scientists, if alive, can build again. Now ask yourself, what if small uranium stockpiles were moved before Operation Midnight Hammer? Where are they now? No one knows. Here's the brutal paradox. If being nuclear-free invites airstrikes, maybe nuclear capability is Iran's only shield. North Korea survived. Iraq didn't. Libya didn't. Iran is watching, learning, calculating. Now you decide. Can bunker busters alone end Iran's nuclear ambition? What if Iran tests a nuke before the next US-Israel strike? Would the world dare hit Iran again? Or back off like they did with Pyongyang? Drop your thoughts in the comments. We're reading everything. Share this video right now and ask your friends. This isn't just a video. It's a question for the world. Share it. Start the debate. What would you do? Comment below. And if you want more high-stakes military engineering deep dives, engineering mega projects, and engineering marvels, subscribe now. Thanks for watching.